Now, we often see conductivity that's too high. Um, and basically, any boiler, based on its design, has sort of a limit to where we want to run the conductivity. Um, yeah, I'd love to use that water forever and not waste any of that energy, but the fact of the matter is we'll start having issues with the water level and we can start having issues with corrosion if the conductivity is too high. Um, essentially, high conductivity causes foam on the water surface. If you take a pot of water freshly filled from the sink and you boil that on the stove, it doesn't boil over. You throw spaghetti in there, the starches seep into that water, they're dissolved and become dissolved solids. Now the pot foams and spills over. Well, the same thing can happen with a boiler. We call that carryover because there's only a little bit of space for the steam to separate from the bubbles and for the bubbles to pop and burst and the steam to travel out. If those bubbles don't pop, pop promptly, we'll actually get a vortex of water and foam going out into the steam system. And a really easy way to test for that is to test that condensate return. Because if we're carrying solids out, that's gonna be coming back. So getting a sample from a drip leg or a condensate receiver out in the system, if we see that number spike, that's gonna indicate that we have carryover. It may be intermittent because at low loads, we have lower steam velocity leaving the boiler, carryover is less likely. But when we have peak demand, we're running the boiler hard or we're dropping the pressure on the boiler because of system demands, we're more likely to have carryover. So if you're monitoring that, check it during your highest load to make sure that you know, you're not getting carryover. So if we detect carryover, and we check our boiler water and our conductivity is high, essentially we need to get rid of some of that water. One way we can do it is with the bottom blowdown. Um, but the issue with that is the bottom blowdown is not something that we can leave cracked unsupervised. It's something that we have to do this blowdown and then close it and come back and do it again. Um, the surface skimmer is allowed to run continuously because we can throttle that and basically because the skimmer outlet is above the heat exchanger in the boiler. So there's no way we can drain the boiler accidentally by skimming too much. Um, high conductivity, we're getting carryover. We can do some blowdowns. We can check for blockage on that skimmer line and we may need to check calibrations if we've got an automatic conductivity control. Because what we have to remember is there's a probe in there and it's measuring the resistance of the water. If we get a deposit on that probe or it's fouled, it's not going to read accurately. But I do have a policy on high conductivity. Um, if in doubt, blow it out. You're, you know, it's going to be a short term loss of energy when we skim or blow down aggressively. But ultimately, we need the boiler to stay online. Um, it's not unusual to get extreme fluctuations in your water level and have low water trips if conductivity goes beyond our limits. So just this week we had a, a technician starting up a boiler and they boiled it out and the boiler was clean, but putting steam into the system, which had been down for a little while, brought back a lot of garbage from the system. So they were getting low water trips all over the place we had to measure the conductivity and it was high from those solids coming back. He did some aggressive blowdown and that remedied the situation. So if you don't have a surface skimmer, you may have to do more aggressive bottom blowdowns at intervals to keep that conductivity in line.